Welcome everyone. We're going to get started with the Project 1 ball bounce. We've got three balls that we're going to be bouncing with different weights. And this is the project overview. So we're applying the 12 principles of animation in our first exercise. This is mostly going to be dealing with timing and spacing. So each of these balls will have a different weight to them. We've got a beach ball that we're going to uh, go through in this exercise. And then you'll apply those principles to the ping pong ball and the bowling ball to show a different weight. Over under our modules, we can scroll down to the Project 1 ball bounces. And down here, this is what you want to download. This is the Maya file. So go ahead and download that and open it up in Maya. OK, we're over here in Maya. And this is what your scene should look like. You should have three balls out here. The white one, which is the ping pong ball. The green one in the middle what, that we're going to be working with. This is the beach ball. And then the last one over here is the bowling ball. Over here in our channel box and layer editor, I've created three layers with each of the balls on it. And this way you can turn them off. So I'm going to turn off the first two right here, the ping pong and the bowling ball, and just leave the beach ball on. So the layout here, if it didn't come up like this, you want to come under workspace. Sometimes it will default like this as just general. You want to come over here and choose animation. And this will put the graph editor down here at the bottom. And you should have your outliner over here showing the ball right here. I just selected it. So that's the beach ball. And then these two have been turned off. I'm going to click out here in my viewport to deselect that. So let's take a look at the rig. We'll zoom in here. I'm just holding down the Alt key. And with my right mouse button, I'm scrolling in. OK, and then I'm using my middle mouse button and holding down the Alt key. And that allows me to pan up and down and side to side. And then the uh, left mouse button holding down the Alt key allows me to rotate around. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. And we're going to select this red line going around here in this triangular shape. I'm just dragging a little marquee across it. Sometimes it's hard to click directly on it. And this is a controller at the very bottom here. And if we look up here in our channel box and layer editor, the very top, we should see what we're selected here. So it may have the project name out here. But at the very end, we see control underscore root. So this is the root controller that has some information over here in the channel box that allows you to manipulate it. So the first thing is, is you can translate it in x, y, and z. So I'm going to go ahead and hit W on the keyboard. That brings up the Move Manipulator. I'm going to grab the red arrow, which is the X orientation, and just slide it along the X axis right there. So if I let it go, we can see that I'm in negative 488. OK, I'm going to just undo that to bring it back to 0. So it is on the, the origin right here, 0, 0, 0. You can move it up and on the Z axis as well. We can also rotate it. OK, so we've got the ability to uh, go ahead and rotate that in all the different orientations. I'm going to undo that, bring it back to 0. And then visibility is just on and off. We can scale it globally. So let's say I want to bring it up so it's much larger. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that at the default of 1. And moving down here, we've got smooth. So we can change it from 0, which is the default, down to 1 or 2. So 2 is going to be more for rendering when you're doing your play blast. You can see it's got a nice clean edge on there. But we typically leave it at 0 for animation. We don't need the high quality rendering. And then we've got ball type. So we've got a variety of different uh, kind of pre-assigned uh, materials where you can change the ball. This is a golf ball right here. OK, and then uh, the basketball, which has got the green color on it, checkerboard, soccer ball, tennis ball. We're going to stick with the simple ball. It's got a solid color on it, and it works well with squash and stretch. If you want to change the color, you can come up to your hyper shade, and you can see the different materials up here that are assigned to the various ball types. OK, so each one of those ball types has a different shader that's over here in the hypershade. The green one is the one I used. 
So if you want to change the color, you can just click on it and then select a different color. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Okay, so that's what the root controller does right here. It's just holding some information. It allows us to place it out here on the grid. As the ball is being keyframed for its bounces, we're not going to put the keyframes on this root control. We could do that, but then it really limits us in what we're capable of doing. Also, the pivot point of that is at the bottom of the ball as opposed to the one that we're going to use, which is in the center of the ball. So when this ball is rolling, it's now rolling correctly from the center pivot. So let's take a look at the other three controllers we have here. We've got the two blue ones on the top and the bottom. If we click on those and we switch over to move, that's W on the keyboard, this allows us to squash and stretch. Okay, from the bottom, we can also do the same thing. So if the ball is uh, spinning in the air or it's uh, transitioned and rotated 180 degrees, we have the ability to do the same thing from this side of the ball. Okay, and then this one in the middle is our main. So this is our control main, and this is what we're going to be putting the majority of our keyframes on when the ball is bouncing as well as rotating. Okay, so it will uh, move up and down, and it will rotate. So we'll come back in the next lesson and begin setting up for animating the keyframes.